Well, good morning, YouTube. We are here to solve the issue of being down to one blade. I'm at Moira Precision, and we're here with Mark, uh, the owner of the business. So look at all the blades. So I am no longer running out of blades. I just picked up a whole whack of them, and that should see me through the rest of the season. Now, it's quite an operation. Looks like Mark sharpens just about anything that's got an edge on it. And what's that? Everything but a dull mine. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a lot of stuff. Now, for whatever reason, and I don't understand why, there seems to be not too many people around that actually do this. So it was great to find Mark, because I sure as heck don't want to spend the money on doing this myself. Because this equipment is bloody expensive. And as you can see, by these, that's some mean looking blades. Mark does a lot of stuff. That's a big ultrasonic that. I, those things are bloody expensive too. I was looking at, at a little one for myself, at, just for doing little carburetor yeah. parts and stuff on Amazon. They're over a hundred bucks for those things. Yeah, it looks like 20,000 US. Oh, jeez. So I made it myself. Oh, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Yeah, well, you got the skills, why not? Yeah, really. So Mark's going to show us uh, how you weld these blades together. Yeah, it's a little bit to hang on to with uh, all that length, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun doing 30-foot blades. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. That's some of your show. Holy mackerel. <laughs> now we anneal it. If the weld is hard. Oh yeah, it would snap at the weld otherwise, huh? Because of the carbon steel. Wow, that's cool. Huh. And then you just grind down the uh, excess on there and it's good to go? Yeah. Grind her down so she's smooth with the blade. And, and one should always check when they're buying blades. It doesn't matter who it's from, because everyone makes a mistake. Run your hand, make sure that. It's been ground down, because if not, it'll wipe your guides out in one heck of a hurry. Oh yeah, especially on mine, because it's not uh, it's not roller bearings yeah. on mine. It's got that kind of... Uh, Sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it would bad. tear them up pretty quickly. Yeah, I've, I've seen it, so... Not by me, but... Wow. Well, folks, that gives you an idea of what's going on and what it takes to put a blade together. It's an interesting process to watch, lots of fun. So we'll get out of Mark's hair here and we're gonna get home and actually start the mill going and see if I can make some more lumber today. Well folks, we are on our way home, but I wanted to share this with you. If you ever find yourself going along Highway 7 here in uh, Ontario, I'm coming up towards a little town called Charbot Lake, uh, and I'm using my Garmin just to give me uh, time for getting home. And there is a road that shows up on here that's called Swamp Road. I'll show you it on the Garmin here. Well, I don't think it's gonna show up very well because of the sun coming in the window. But I'm headed west, and I'm just going by the turnoff for Arden. 
and a little ways past here is a road called Swamp Road. Now, for whatever reason, Garmin is directing me down Swamp Road, and then you just come back onto the 7 again. If you see that road come up, you're in this area, never, never take it unless you have got a truly serious four-wheel drive because it's just, it's not possible. And you'd probably need a chainsaw. Uh, we did take it once just out of curiosity because it sounds kind of ominous just by the name. I mean, Swamp Road. Yeah, it goes through a swamp. If you were lucky enough to get partway along, and had someone come in the other way, you'd be backing out all the way. It's why this road shows up is unexplainable. So don't take Swamp Road. <laughs> well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate the like. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to the job. Well, there we go, folks. We got this uh, tent all ready to go. I've got my uh, stacking stickers back in there. And I'm going to set this up with uh, four supports. Because this is these are longer boards, I was using three supports on the eight-footers uh, down in the other uh, storage dome. But we've got 10 footers going in here, so I decided to use four supports underneath them just to help make sure that uh, we don't get any unnecessary warping in these things. Don't want that to happen. And along with the uh, new Woodland Mills chipper that showed up, I got an upgrade for the sawmill, which we'll have a look at. I'm quite uh, excited about giving these a try. So I'm sure if you folks have watched any of my uh, sawmill videos, you have probably seen me talking about these, the log stops that go in back here, of course, to stop the log from rolling off the back of the mill. And they are constantly having to be moved and turned and whatnot. When you roll a log over, I can't have this facing this way. I've got to turn it around the other way. So I've got that angle that the log will kind of roll off of but it still gets caught and when i start getting down lower i do definitely want them this way so i've got as much surface pushing against them as i can get so i saw these online and and uh, followed reviews about them and whatnot and they got very good reviews so i'm quite excited about giving them a try Yeah, so these come with a, with a roller that goes on the top. I think that's just great. And apparently it makes it so much easier to roll the log over because of the rollers. Well, one thing I see right away is I'm going to have to be really careful of this piece sticking out here. I can't turn it around the other way. It's designed only to go that way. But... Yeah, I like that. So this is that really ugly log I was talking about. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. If I'm really lucky, I can get a 6x6 six six out of it. Now, 6x6s, six six I want this to be able to be used in your uh, standard uh, mount and that type of thing for a 6x6. Six six. So that means I'm actually cutting it to 5 and 5 eighths square. Because the numbers that they tell you in the lumber store don't mean as much as they used to. 
All right. I love that. Holy mackerel, does that ever work easier? That's terrific. All right, folks, my friends from Pure Later were just here with uh, my most recent upgrade. Let's have a look at that. So as you know, I had uh, an issue with a cant hook breaking on me. You saw that from my short. I have repaired it and got a handle back on, but I felt it just broke too easily. So, we've upgraded. Come on out of here. So this is by Wood Miser. Yeah, break that. <laughs> So that's got a good sharp hook on it. Lots of grip there. The reviews talk very highly of it. Now it is a bit heavy, but I knew it was going to be heavy, but I wanted that extra strength. So that is a beauty. So that is by Wood Miser and it's steel. No wood, not aluminum, it's steel. So that is here just on time to help me with those uh, 10 foot logs. That's great. Well, it's been an interesting couple of days of upgrades and improvements and new and resharpened blades. The chipper, this is a upgrade for the chipper before it's even put together. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, working on it. Now, from what I understand, we have got some rain coming for a few days. And obviously I've got quite a bit to do inside just to uh, get some of this stuff assembled and get ready to uh, move on with the 10-foot uh, logs. 
So there is a lot of infrastructure type of work uh, that needs to be done for this kind of thing, keeping the storage uh, in decent shape, keeping room for storage, maintaining your equipment, upgrading your equipment. Um, so there, there is a lot of time spent doing that, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it. And every day is a new challenge. So I'm gonna leave you there uh, for this video, folks. So thanks very much for watching. And as always, if you've been enjoying the videos, please don't forget to give it a like and share it around. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. So remember to stay safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. Yeah, that's a beast.